everyone. So in this video, we're going to talk about another topic of readings in Philippine history subject. We're in our topic for this video is all about understanding sources. So in this video, we're going to talk about the primary and then the secondary sources. So those are the sources that you usually use in historical researches. So first thing that we have to talk about or we are going to talk about in this video is all about the sources of history. So in this video, actually, uh, when we say sources, um, it is the basis. And about, and as a work of non-fiction, since history is considered as a non-fiction literature, and po, this is a previous video natin, nabanggit po yun dun. So the study of history is a relentless uh, search for truth. So this is one of the reality behind of the term history. So it is uh, merely related to the searching of truth. So this truth is considered as the what the uh, what is the real happenings of the past, something like that. And this truth is about the events in the past, in the past, which are contained in their sources. And in this study of the history, sources are always important. So this is one of the very important thing that we have to consider in studying history, yung sources. So pag sinabi nating sources, basically ito yung pinagmumula ng mga informations, ng mga idea at ng mga kaalaman base dun sa isang particular na account na binabasa natin or the history itself. Okay, sources are where the informations come from. So these are the things or these are the modes that we usually uh, gather some data and information to know a particular event. And in a technical sense, the source of historical information is documents. So most especially kapag uh, nagkakaroon ng historical research, research researches rather. So, ito yung laging nakikita natin, ano po, yung documents. So, those documents are the supporting details or uh, evidences that was, they usually use to prove that a particular event that uh, this particular history talking about is really true. Ano po? And when we say document, it is the written materials that says about a historical event. So, usually kasi kapag nadidinig natin yung document, eh, pumapasok sa isip natin is uh, somehow written materials. But no, document can be a narration. Uh, it's either a copy of speech, a letter, a receipt, a report, and most especially an eyewitness account. Or sometimes it is considered as a book. Some sources are not, are not written but can be authoritative. Author, authority, authoritative, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so anyway, say, uh, some sources are not written but it can be uh, authoritative. So, ang pinatukoy po dito is, so those documents or those sources na hindi po siya nakasulat, unlike the document na tinatawag natin, na binigay nga natin yung example kanina, it's either a narration, it's either a copy of speech, yung sulat, yung mga liham ng panahon, o yung mga liham po na ginagamit sa mga komunikasyon. Ano po, na nagsisilbi sa padahon at either yung communication noon na nagsisilbi ngayong daan para malaman natin or yun yung isa sa mga nagpapatunay na yung isang particular event na tinutukoy natin ay totoong nangyari. And it's either a receipt, yung mga resibo, and then mga reports, and most especially the eyewitness account. So pag sinabi naman natin na non-written account or not written accounts, not written documents, these are like for example the relics if you're familiar with that memorabilia pictures drawings sketches fossils those um things artifacts na nakukuha po ng ating mga archaeologists so and then uh, that we will consider the remains ano po those artifacts is considered as the not written documents na tinatawag po natin or sources that are not written and these are the sources who are living individual so they are called um yun naman tinatawag natin na living individual ito naman po yung mga tinatawag na eyewitness so when we say eyewitness 
sila po yung nandun sa pangyayari. Nandun mismo sila sa pangyayari ng particular na event na yun. So like for example, the Voyage of Magellan Around the World. So one of the famous author na nagbigay po ng account o nagbigay ng kanyang um, diaries and journals ay si Antonio Pigafetta, which is one of the men ano po, nakasama ni Magellan during the circumnavigation. And uh, they were present, so since that is the eyewitness, uh, when used in historical research, eh, they referred to as the rep- respondent and informant. So that is the role of being an eyewitness. So they considered as the respondents or the participants and then the informant of a particular event na tinutukoy po natin. So let's now have the different types or the types of historical sources. So first, we have the primary sources. So when we say primary source or primary sources, uh, they are the materials which already directly point or discuss the subject matter. So there is an, uh, there's no um, research pa po pagdating sa primary sources. So sa primary sources, um, it's either kasi na ito yung tinatawag natin na, uh, anyway, so ito. Primary sources as are material produced by people or groups directly involved in the event or topic being studied. But not just a materials. Ano po, sometimes those people that became a participant or the eyewitness to the event is be considered as already a primary sources ano so they are part of the i uh, the primary sources yung mga eyewitness po natin yung mga participant yung mga informant during the particular event so meaning to say sila yung talagang nakakita nung pangyayari yun and then um these sources range from the eyewitness accounts diaries letter legal documents, official documents, or the government, or it's either government document or the private documents. And most especially, photography. So, some of the relevance or significance of having those photos na ginagawa po natin sa panahon natin ngayon can be uh, create or can be uh, contribute a big change in the future. Ano po? So, pwedeng yung mga pictures na pinagkukuha Pwede din na selfies. Ano po, malay nyo, may mga panibagong mga mukha na ma-evolve from the time. Ay, through the generations. So, malalaman nila na iba yung hugis na itsura natin sa panahon natin ngayon, unlike sa panahon nila. Ano po. And then, we also have the different example of the primary sources. So, first, we have the auto autobiographies. We also have the speeches. Those speeches na binibigay po ng mga, like for example, politicians sa kanila mga speeches. So, like, for example, sa panahon natin, the nation's address of the president. Ano po? If you're still familiar with the declaration of the poly- a declaration of Philippine independence that considered as a primary source, which is a uh, speech of uh, Governor General Emilio Aguinaldo. And we also have the essays by persons expressing, expressing his own views. So, like, for example, those essays by Gat Jose Rizal, so, those are an example of a kind of primary sources that shows or depicting some controversies about the 19th century, something like that. And then, we also have the receipts. Those uh, recibo na nare-receive natin can be also used as primary sources for a particular event na pwede po natin sa liksikin. And we also have the letter to the editor expressing uh, typo error, expressing the writer's view. We also have the laws, ordinances, letter of the instructions, and some decrees. Books containing the reputations of the event is also part of the primary sources. Another one is newspaper articles reporting directly about the event. So like for example, yung pong mga um, newspaper natin ngayong araw, which is basically, yan po ay mga newspaper na uh, mga event na nangyari kahapon, yung mga mababasa natin ngayon. But somehow, newspaper also is considered as secondary sources. So later on, I will uh, give you the, def- uh, the difference between primary sources and then the secondary sources. Okay, so we also have the diaries and journals. So, kaya mapapansin nyo, majority of the account or some accounts na 
nakikita natin na naglalaman ng isang particular event of the history of the Philippines is came from a diary of a person or a journal of a particular person. So those are the eyewitness or the informant of that particular event. We also have the reports. Yes, most especially is the eyewitness accounts, letters, editorials, transcript of record. So, isa din po yan. Eyewitness accounts. So, naulit yung eyewitness accounts. So, photographs is also part of it. Old sketches and then drawings can be part of the primary sources. Old maps. So, if you're familiar with some controversy about the um, issues of agawa ng lupa with Malaysia and then China and then Philippines, the Sabah Island, isa po ang pra, isa sa mga naging uh, what you call this, isa sa mga naging sources or uh, ebidensya dito is yung mga luma pong mapa na nagpapatunay na ang Saba Island ay parte pa ng Malaysia. And we also have the cartoons or some caricatures is also part of the primary sources. And then materials evidence of a prehistoric past life like for example the cave drawings or cave carving, old syllabaries, and then ancient writing. So, yung mga clay tablet natin na tinatawag o yung mga writings on a tablet is also an example of primary sources. So, we have also the statistical tables, graphs, and charts. And sometimes, we use also the oral history or recordings by electronics. So, means of the account of the eyewitness or participant. So, nowadays kasi, we have the digital medias na and then some modernized um, gadgets that we usually used for some recording. But during the ancient time, they also used the oral history. Yun nga lang, isa sa mga problema pagdating sa oral history is nagkakaroon na kasi ng problema sa pag-interpret minsan. Ano po. And then, some of the problem na, na kinakaharap dito is yung pagsalin-salin kasi natin ng mga information is nagkakaroon ng pagbabago, nagkakaroon ng dagdagbawas na kwento, which is, hindi na dito na susukat yung, um, what do call this, yung reliability or nung katotohanan nung, uh, pina, nung isang particular na yon na history, something like that. Kasi, without a par, uh, we usually use the oral history, but in a form of um, some, or it has, some evidences that will support. So, that is one of the very important things. Ano but, we still ano, uh, consider that oral history or oral um, communication can be part of the primary sources. Yun nga lang, um, mahirap kasing uh, kunin or iestima yung, this, yung uh, katotohanan behind that particular oral communications or for oral history na tinatawag natin. Okay, so another another um, sources is we have the uh, secondary sources. So secondary sources are made by made by individual who were not direct participant to the to the events, or are people who got the information from somebody else or from the primary sources. So basically, pag sinabi po natin na Secondary sources. Ito na po yung interpretation na tinatawag. So, pagdating sa secondary sources, these are the interpreted sources used by primary sources. So, kumbaga, ang tinutukay na nito ay ang um, pagsasagawa na. Ito na, kumbaga, ito na yung pinakambuod ng primary sources. Using the primary sources. Something like that. And, in some account, we consider that secondary sources is the testimony of anyone who is not an eyewitness. So, this is one of who were not present usually on the event. Ano po? And then, interpreted primary sources is one of the uh, kumbaga, a root word pagdating po sa pagkakakilala ng secondary sources. And aside from that, pag sinabi kasi natin na secondary sources, these are the digested information. So, ano si digested na ano na siya, nasuri na po or the information derived from the primary or considered secondary sources already. So, somehow, we consider this, um, we consider those books, articles, and then some scholarly journals is considered as already an interpreted 
primary sources. So, kumbaga, ito na yung mga secondary sources. So, they created through the interview, something like that. Ano po, yung mga secondary sources, ito yung um, accounts po or ito yung mga source na pwede nating magamit para sa pagpapatotoo na yung, or ito yung mga interpretation eh. But, we usually used pa din ang secondary sources. Ano po, para mapatunayan natin na yung isang bagay, isang particular event ay talagang nangyari. And, that's it. We also have this um, example. So, we have textbooks. So, yung mga libro na usually ginagamit natin sa panahon natin ngayon, those um, supplementary references that we usually use in our, in our studies is considered already as a secondary sources. Kasi sila po, or ito na ay kumbaga na edit na siya. So, it already conducted an interview. It already conducted some research to create this kind of textbooks. And then, we also have the encyclopedia entries. And most especially, magazine articles about a particular topic is already considered or can be a part of these secondary sources. But sometimes, those secondary sources, paglaon po ng panahon, nagiging primary sources na lang din sila para uh, kung saan magpapatunay. So like, for example, this um, um, newspaper. So some of the, somehow, some part, they consider that newspaper is also a secondary sources. Kasi kung mapapansin nyo po, some article inside of the newspaper is already an interpreted through primary sources. Lalong-lalo na kung ang nilalaman ng balita doon sa newspaper, it's all about a crime. So already nagkaroon na ng investigation for that particular um, crime wherein there is already um, interpretation for that particular a crime. So, kumbaga, meron ng, meron ng sagot or meron ng suspect na napatunayan. But, uh, pagdating ng panahon or pwedeng, as times goes by, pwede na itong i-consider po na primary sources. Kasi, itong newspaper na ito will serve as an, or give some information to that particular idea na binubuo ng isang author, let's say, or some historian, something like that. And we also have the teacher's report on a student's behavior as reported to school's counselor. If you're still familiar with those uh, grade cards, yung uh, Form 138 na binibigay po sa public school, uh, meron kasi dati, ewan ko lang, limot po ako ngayon, if meron pang ganun, yung mga comments and suggestions ng mga teachers about the behavior of the particular student. So, meron doon. So, reports from a person taking about the subject matter. So, that is the secondary sources. Actually, there is another one or another sources. So, when we say tertiary sources, ito naman po yung tinatawag natin general reference. So, we have primary, secondary, and tertiary. Pero ang tertiary, we, do, we don't usually um, uh, use this, but this is considered as a general references. So, one of the example of tertiary sources is the information found in the card catalog about the particular book or that particular docu document that we usually use. And some abstract of books, this, uh, like for example, the dis dissertations, are also can be considered as a general reference. And so, that is the general, uh, that is the tertiary sources. And we also have the primary or the conclusion about the primary and secondary sources. So, when we say primary sources, these are the materials that are considered or those materials of primary sources are considered more authoritative eh, than the secondary sources materials. So, because uh, they contain the information that is directly discusses the subject matter. So, kumbaga, those primary sources is the full uh, evidences that we can use of particular history. So, sometimes kasi uh, sa sobrang dami ng secondary sources na naproproduce po, nagkakaroon na ng kanya-kanyang interpretation and perspective depende sa kung anong klaseng paniniwala, kultura, or um, beliefs meron ng isang particular author na gumagawa.
So sometimes, pare-pareho sila ng primary sources pero nagkakaroon sila ng iba't ibang interpretation. Kasi doon na lumalabas yung mga biases and then mga, ano yun, yung mga hindi balanced na mga information. And as defined earlier, documents are written materials that say something about the past. The activity in researching for written materials is called documentary research. So pag sinabi natin research, researching for written materials, those are the documentary research. Okay, so we also have the way of know, evaluation of primary sources and secondary sources. So I'll be giving you some ideas on how to evaluate a primary sources than the secondary sources. So first, uh, it is re uh, already common knowledge in the academe that both primary and secondary sources are important in fleshing out the details of significant events in the history. So in some point, we are not saying here that primary sources is more important than secondary sources. So we cannot produce a secondary sources without the use of primary sources. Always remember that. Ano po? So hindi natin mapapatotohanan ang secondary sources kung wala pong suporta ng primary sources. So both of them are very important things or very significant sa pag-alam po ng totoong nangyari sa nakaraan. And... Uh, nevertheless, kasi, the primacy of the primary sources, uh, at least in classifying, ano po, in classifying the, um, the source of primary and secondary is not a kind of easy one, ano po. So, nevertheless, the primacy of the primary over the secondary sources has always been recognized. So, somehow, this is due to the fact that primary sources provides better and more accurate historical details compared from the secondary sources. However, those authenticity and reliability of primary sources should be scrutinized before they use. So that is one of the very important thing. So bago natin um, patunayan na yung isang particular na yun ay totoo, syempre dapat alamin natin na yung particular sources o yung primary sources na gagamitin na natin ay pwede ba talaga siya or accountable ba siya dun sa isang particular na pangyayari na yun to produce a secondary sources. So, always uh, look for the authenticity and reliability of that primary sources. Ano po, sometimes, lalong-lalo na sa panahon natin ngayon na very proliferate yung um, mga fake news. Ano po, so, in our day, today, uh, this is the age of proliferation of some fake news is evident in the both uh, print and digital media platforms. And thus, it becomes more apparent that sources should be scrutinized for their credibility. So, one of these uh, struggle or one of the hindrances para po uh, makonsider natin yung primary sources and secondary sources is uh, na totoo is itong fake news. So, in our uh, times today, ano, kung mapapansin nyo, very rare na or napakadami na ng mga digital, ng mga social media platforms na nagbibigay ng mga iba't ibang information that we can gather. But be careful pagdating sa pagkuha ng mga information. Ano po? So most especially yung pagkuha natin. So like for example, there is an assignment of your particular subject. So like for example, history subject. So this is one of the very important things to consider first before you get that particular idea or information you gathered from the internet or from the Google, something like that. Always uh, look for the reliability of that particular website. So, always remember if that particular website is, um, alam niyo yun, yung, ano siya, hindi siya obsolete. Yung mga informations niya, yung mga, yung mga dates ng website ay, kumbaga, ay updated, something like that. Hindi yung basta-basta nagbibigyan na lang sila ng information na hindi na nababago, which is very important yung mga supporting details for that particular information. And most especially, like for example, YouTube nowadays is also one of the references na ginagamit natin. So, that is the reality, ano po, even YouTube is one of the uh, sources or one of the references that we can use for a particular topic that we are, we are going to talk about. But, 
always remember the importance of books. Hindi lang yung basta nakabase tayo sa mga napapanood natin. So, maybe we can use those videos as part of our evidences. But, never stick for that information without proper researching. So, we have to conduct a proper research for a particular topic so we cannot uh, so we can be able to produce a particular information that is uh, very useful na pagdating sa panahon natin and sa pagdating ng mga dadating na panahon something like that ano po and okay so it becomes more apparent that sources should be scrutinized for their credibility so this is one of the very important things so we should always scrutinize the credibility of a particular source, sources that we are going to uh, use. Lalong-lalo na, yun nga, balik tayo, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and then some social media platforms. So, um, ano ba yung kakayahan nitong mga uh, blogger, nitong mga content creator to create some information about this? Are they really related for that uh, topic that they are going to discuss? They're do the discussing of something like that. So are they part of the history? Are they the eyewit uh, the eyewitness? Something like that. And so those the credibilities that we have to be considered or we have to consider in particular uh, particular the examining or evaluating the primary and then the secondary sources. Okay, so although, nabanggit natin to, so although the primacy is given to the primary sources, there are instances where when the credibility of these sources are con contestable. So according to Garaghan, during his research 1950, he identified six points of inquiries to evaluate the authenticity of primary sources. So these are according to Garaghan research. Po, ano? So he gave some points, which is six points, that we have to consider to uh, in, in terms of inquiring or evaluating the authenticity of a particular primary sources. So, unang-una na daw po na kailangan nating tingnan ay yung date. So, halimbawa, naghahanap tayo ng um, particular na uh, ebidensya dun sa pangyayari na yun. So, we, we, always, we always have to... So, like, for example, nabanggit natin yung newspaper. Dito na tayo sa newspaper. Kasi nagkakaroon palagi ng panggulo sa newspaper. So, i-analyze natin. So, ang newspaper, pwede na natin magamit ang mga nakaraang newspaper. So, siguro mga 5 years ago, 10 years ago, can be considered as primary sources. Pero yung newspaper ngayon, ngayong araw, is already a secondary sources na po. Ano, hindi siya pwede natin, ma hindi natin siya makukonsider na primary sources sa panahon natin ngayon. And dito, when it was produced, that particular primary sources, kailan ba itong ginawa? Kailan ito na-create? Something like that. Pangalawa is localization. Where did it originate? And then, authorship. Who wrote it? Yung bang nagsulat nito ay katanggap-tanggap na siya ay manunulat ng ganitong particular na pangyayari. Something like that. And we also have the analysis. So, what pre is pre-existing material serve as the basis for its production. So, analyze the primary sources. Is there any evidences that will support that particular source? source? So, like for example, balik tayo dun sa oral history. I-analyze natin. So, sinasabi ko kanina, um, hindi tayo basta-basta dapat naniniwala sa sabi-sabi, lalong-lalo na sa sabi-sabi, or sabihin na natin sa mga tismas ang kapitbahay. Sinasabi ng kapitbahay, mabuntis ka. Pero, hindi ka naman lumalabas ng bahay. Ngayon, ano yung basis niya para masabi na ikaw ay buntis kasi pinangalat na sa buong barangay? Do you get my point? That uh, particular uh, stories na ginagawa po ng ibang tao, is there any basis for that production? That production of that information na tinutukoy natin. So, we have to be analytic person pagdating po sa pag-analyze ng primary sources. We also have the integrity. What was its orig original form? The integrity of that particular uh, primary sources. Ano po? So, like for example, um, the faces of the humans that we have today. So, all of our faces. So, sabi nila, uh, we came from ape, something like that. And the credibility. 
So, what is the evidential value of its content? Ano yung kahalagahan? Ano yung um, makukuha natin dyan sa particular content na yan? We also have, okay, so that is the six. Ano po? So, that is the six na ibinigay po sa atin ni Garaghan about the evaluating the authenticity of a particular primary sources. And always remember that the absence of primary documents that can attest the accuracy of any historical claim is really a problem in the extensive study of history. So like for example, the Code of Kalanchao Code. Ano po, na napatunayan sa panahon natin ngayon na ito lamang ay isang haka-haka na wala naman talagang ganito klaseng batas na sinusunod during ancient time, something like that. And then most especially, uh, if you're familiar with the issue about the Declaration of Philippine Independence, yung pagbagayway po ng um, uh, watawat ng Pilipinas sa bahay daw, daw ni General, Governor General Emilio Aguinaldo. So, ang tinutukay dito is yung balkonahe. So, sinasabi na yung balkonahe ang pinagwagaywayan. So, meron ngayong naglabas na image ng bahay ni um, Emilio Aguinaldo na wala pong magpapakita na may balkonahe. So, kumbaga, where is the primary documents that will support that particular uh, history na tinatawag? Nasa balkonahe nga ng bahay ni Governor General uh, Emilio Aguinaldo ginanap ang Declaration of the Philippine Independence o yung wagay, pagwagayway ng watawat ng Pilipinas. And then most especially the bans daw po na kumanta sa panahon na yon o sa pagdeklara ng kalayaan ng Pilipinas. Ano po? So that is one of the very important things that we have to consider. So in that in that sense kasi, the significance of secondary sources should not be discredited. Ano po kasi, ang pinakang naapektuhan kapag mali ang primary sources ay ang secondary sources. So, secondary sources are readily available in print and digital repositories. So, later on, I will discuss to you about some points that we have to consider considering the secondary and then primary. And secondary accounts of historical events are narratives commonly passed on from one generation to the next or knowledge that is shared within a community. So, in somehow, there is a similar to the usual problem with passing information from one point to another. But there is, or there, there is um, some altered information na nangyayari kapag oral yung Ano natin. And some information that relate from person to person, um, we cannot uh, test the accuracy of that source or some sort materials ano po, na ginagamit. So, minsan nakakompromise pa nga yung mga credibility nitong mga particular na sources na to. And nevertheless, secondary sources materials in the study of Philippine history without conjectures and the refutations have the capacity to fill in gaps caused by the lack of absence of primary sources. So this is one of the very uh, common problem ng pag-aaral po ng Philippine history. Kaya hanggang sa panahon natin ngayon, ang dami pa rin mga historical events na nababago because of the lack of evidences or lack of primary sources. So lately, because of the historical research na kinakandak na ating mga old historians, nagkakaroon ng mga bagong ideas and information in a particular event na tapos na pong i-research. Kung mapapansin nyo, like for example, the Battle of Mactan. So napatunayan na hindi naman pala si Lapu-Lapu ang pumatay kay Magellan, which is from our uh, grade school, ito yung naituro sa atin na si Lapu-Lapu ang pumatay kay Magellan, something like that. Ano po? Uh, nagkakandak, nagkaro, nagkakaroon kasi ng mga pagbabago ng researches in, the, in our country. Ano po, which, because of the lack of primary sources. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng support ng primary sources because of some countries na nanakop sa atin na nahanapan po ng mga ebidensya na talagang totoo itong mga particular na ito. Ano po, lalong-lalo na yung mga researches ngayon na nagsisilabasan. But always... Uh, remember that na maniniwala lang tayo dun sa mga reliable sources 
ng information. So like for example, Historical Commission of the Philippines. So they are the one who has the capacity or capable of giving us an information, reliable information about the past of the Philippines. Something like that. And according to Louis Gotcha, uh, he emphasized that it is impossible for a historian to avoid using secondary sources due to difficulty in assessing primary sources. So this is one of the very uh, rare uh, cases. So sometimes because of mapansin yung newspaper. So hindi naman siya talaga totally who consider na primary sources. Sometimes it considered as secondary sources or vice versa. So this is one of the um, thing na ginagawa po ng mga historian. So they cannot avoid the using of secondary or another secondary sources. So they already have an idea about their particular sources or secondary sources na ginagawa. But through ad or through adapting some information from their co-historians is also doing ano po ginagawa din yun. and most often historians depend on secondary sources to improve their background knowledge or con of contemporary documents and detect any errors they may contain so like for example um those adaptive version ng mga libro po uh, halimbawa we have the Zonia Zaides book about the life and works of Gato Serizal. So after the publication of those books na ginawa nilang mag-ama na Zayde, some of the authors ay nagsilabasa na din po. So yung iba, nag-base lang din sa secondary sources na prinodus po ng mag-ama ng Zayde, which is uh, some of the information na nandun ay already interpreted from a primary sources. So, kumbaga, pig-revise na lang nila, pig-interpret na lang po nila. So, that is another uh, secondary sources. Okay. So, especially, Gottschalk suggested, suggested that secondary sources must only be used for, so these are the use, useful of, usefulness of the secondary sources. So, sinasabi ni Gottschalk na ang secondary sources ay kailangan lang gamitin through deriving the setting wherein the contemporary evidences will fit in the grand narrative of history and getting leads to other bibliographic data and acquiring quotation or citations from contemporary or other sources sources and deriving interpretations with a particular or with the view of testing and improving them but not accepting them as an outright truth some of the you know, historians to kumukuha po na information on a already a secondary materials is nakakasuha ng plagiarism so that is why some of the ano books na makikita nyo po, merong citation kung kanina nila kinuha yung information na yun, which is, that is one of the very important thing that we have to consider in creating some uh, ideas, ano po, so we cannot uh, own other information, others information without uh, uh, crediting or cred without crediting it to them. Uh, okay, so Okay, so always remember that historians should be prepared for the, to verify the information provided by the uh, secondary sources. Okay, so according to Martha Howell and Walter Previner, they, they are stated or stating that before any source can be considered as evidence in a historical argument, it must, miss, it must satisfy the three preconditions na tinatawag. Una po, sinasabi nila na... Um, those evidences, it must be comprehensible at the most basic level of vocabulary language, vocabulary language, and then handwriting. So, kumbaga, sa first precondition na tinatawag natin, it sets the ground for the contentions or contentions of the acceptability of the source and for the all aspects of the debate. So, kaya mapapansin nyo, ah, uh, it's all uh, it always uh, cited kung saan to kinuha something like that ano po and then comprehensible dapat yung isang evidences na meron tayo so second one is the source uh, that source must be carefully located in accordance with time and place so kumbaga its author its composer or writer and the location where it was produced and published 
should be noted for the checking of the authenticity and accuracy of that particular sources. So, para mapatunayan natin na yung bagay na yun or yung isang particular uh, evidence na hawak-hawak natin, ay it should be carefully located in accordance with place and time. And most especially, this is one of the very important thing to check the authenticity and accuracy of that particular uh, sources. So, the third one is through the first two preconditions, the authenticity of the source must always be checked and counter-checked before being accepted as a credible resources in any historical finding. So, like, for example, those publishing companies. So, sila naman yung isa sa mga kailangan natin um, bigyan ng trabaho pagdating po sa pag-counter-check nito mga informations na to. Ano po, those editor editors na kailangan nilang um, istimahin kung talaga bang itong mga bagay-bagay na ito ay dapat ikonsidera. Okay. So, another thing is there is a given possibility of forgery. So, when we say forgery, um, dito na pupapasok yung um, also the mislabeling. Historians are not uh, only evaluate the sources in terms of external characteristics characteristic that focus on the questions of where, when, and by whom. They also evaluate the terms of internal criteria, which include seven factors wherein it was identified by Howell and Previn here. Okay, so before we, uh, before I give you the seven, and po, the seven criteria na tinutukoy ni Howell and the Previn here. Let's now uh, have this external criticism and internal criticism. So these are the things that we have to consider in analyzing primary sources and secondary sources. So we have this um, external and uh, internal criticism. So sometimes kasi it is not enough to have a historical source and believe its content of the face value. So on the other hand, we should or we have to... Uh, skeptical. We have to be a skeptical mind and then should open our open minds to have a new ideas and to be able to understand history. One should be able to modify his views in the face of new evidences or persuasive arguments na tinatawag natin. So it is also necessary to interpret the document based on the reader's uh, own perspective. So dito na pupapasok yung two processes natin na tinatawag natin na internal criticism and external criticism. So, the first process is yung external criticism. So, when we say external criticism, these are the criticism that examines the documents genuine. Yung katotohanan nung document na yun. So, tandaan po ha, external criticism ay pumapatungkol sa pag-evaluate or pag-examine ng document genuine. So, it, uh, it studies who made the document and when he did it, do it, and then was the author living when he made the document, something like that, uh, what accounts for its preservation? Why did it remain as uh, if it is still just newly written, something like that, when it was created a century ago? And then many documents have been proven as forgeries. So, the best example, so sinasabi ko nga sa inyo yung kanina, which is the Code of Talanchao Code. One of the best example of forgery information in the Philippine history is yung Code of Talanchao Code. Na kung saan, during 20th century in our times, kasi 21st na tayo, no? so lately napatunayan po na siya na isa lamang paglilin lang sa batas na pinagpapatungkulan. Kasi may, meron po mga batas ngayon na doon ibinis, which is, uh, napatunayan na hindi naman talaga nag-exist. No, ever, ever, as in ever, hindi nag-exist ang Kalanchao Code. Ano po? And then, we have also some question na tinaginagamit po sa pag-analyze ng external criticism. So, like, for example, uh, this one of the very important thing that we have to consider the external criticism. For what purpose was the document written? Anong dahilan bakit sinulat yung particular na dokumento na yan. Para saan ba yan? So, like, for example, 
uh, documents written several decades after the historical event may raise some doubts. So, always remember na yung mga accounts po, kaya mapapansin nyo, may mga libro po na hanggang sa panahon natin ngayon, nagkakaroon ng revision, nagkakaroon ng pagbabago, kasi pwedeng yung mga libro na yan ay maging doubtful na. Pwede, paano mo nasabi na yan bagay na yan ay nag exist pa ngayon? Something like that. Kung baga, meron na kasi mga pagbabagong research, pagbabagong o mga makabagong informations na pwede nating magamit niyo sa pag-alam ng nakaraan. Ano po? And then, like for example, uh, yung ganitong klaseng tanong kasi is isa po sa mga nag-raise ng tanong kung totoo ba at ba yung, uh, kung baga yung validity at reliability po ng nangyari na tinatawag natin sa history na cry of balintawak or di pugad lawin. If you're still familiar with that particular history, 70 years ago, nangyari po yan. Wherein, hanggang sa panahon natin ngayon, madami pa rin authors ang gumagawa ng mga informations na uh, patungkol doon. Okay, another thing is, when we say, or when we having this external criticism, another question that we have to provide on examining the uh, primary sources or the secondary sources is was there a promise or some of some form of reward promised for this document something like that and then was there any threat or any form of coercion when this document was created because some researchers uh, researchers rather may have promised some co compensation in exchange for the testimony of some rep respondent so some respondent is also afraid of libel cases or some other reprisal from person they described in unfavorable light. So that, that is why baka ito yung isa sa mga uh, konsepto na tinitingnan po sa external criticism. So kumbaga, pagdating sa external criticism, it is very important na tingnan natin yung outside ideas, outside information behind of that particular information na binabasa natin or behind that particular account. So maybe baka ginawa lang ito nitong author na to kasi nagkaroon ng threatening doon sa respondent pag hindi niya sinabi yung ganitong klaseng uh, information about that particular particular event, something like that. Ano po? So, external criticism, aside from the um, information na nilalaman ng account na yun, is dapat uh, malaman din natin kung ano yung outside or hidden identity nitong particular account na to. So, another thing is, was there any ulterior motive when this document was created? So, is there any uh, kumbaga, a secret behind this kind of document? Something like that. Okay. So, another thing is, the author may have been written his historical account to make himself look good or, some, you know, to avoid some blame for any debacle during the period being described. Ano po? So, like, for example, yung mga accounts po na tinatawag na self-serving. Or, like, let me give you an example. One of the account po na ginawa ni Antonio de Morgas, which is yung um, pinangalanan niya po na Battle of Fortune Island, which was happened during December 1, 1600. So, according to them, according to the research, instead of capturing the enemy vessels, which is the Dutch ship, which is that is by Mauritius, uh, he ordered his men to disengage and he was among those who abandoned his ship, the San Diego to which later sunk, which is ano yung uh, pinakang hidden identity of this particular document. Yun yung isa sa mga tinitingnan dito. And then another thing is, um, like for example, is there another version of the document or the historical information referred to that particular document? Something like that. Ano po? So, kumbaga, Meron bang ibang version nitong klasing o kung baga itong document ba na binabasa natin na ito ay ito lang talaga yung information na nagbibigay ng information dun sa dokumentong yun na tinatawag ay binabasa natin. Which is to give you an information or to give you an example about this, if you still remember the different, ano po, different testimonies of General Emilio Aguinaldo, Governor General Emilio Aguinaldo about the description of the true color of the Philippine flag. So, nung una, sinabi niya, 
na ang kulay daw po ng Philippine flag ay azul coro, ay azul azul coro. Pero di naglaon, nagkaroon ng another ver- version. So sabi niya azul cielo naman. So these differences affected the colors of the Philippine Philippine flag. Sorry. Philippine flag uh when it changed colors from dark to blue sky or the sky blue ano po back during 1980 1980s if you still remember if you already uh, aware with that kind of issue about the Philippine flag color uh nagkaroon po diyan na ano ba dapat talaga is it the dark blue or the sky blue one kasi ito yung isa sa mga nakapagpalito po yung dalawang uh, version na binigay ni Governor General Emilio Aguinaldo of what with, what is the real color of this um our philippine flag kasi once the reader is convinced that the document is genuine he may proceed to the, the second process so this is another thing so that is the external criticism so kumbaga aside from the having those information do sa document na yon so para mapatotohanan natin Lagi dapat dito is malalaman natin if that document is genuine, kung totoo ba talaga itong document na to. So, looking for the information, if that document is real, is the outside, ano po, the outside identity of the, or the external identity of that particular account. So, if there is another diversion or if there is, uh, what is the purpose of that particular document written, and then, Is there any promise or some form of reward for the uh, respondent to just uh, give his own um, comments about that particular event? And this is one of the... Uh, that is the first process. So ngayon, kapag ang isang reader ay konbinsido na po na ang kanyang binabasa ay totoo na, tama na, nangyari talaga siya, syempre, sunod na niyang proseso na pupuntahan is the second one, which is ito na po yung internal criticism. So sa internal criticism, it is a kind of method of determining whether the contents of historical information is accurate. So when we say accurate, nagtutugma ba yung lahat ng information dun sa loob ng dokumento na yon something like that. So, kumbaga, ang external criticism is more on Um, concerned through determining the nature or the authenticity of the document itself. While this internal criticism is according to, okay, so to give you a uh, definition, which is came from Frank Pell and then Wallen, so according to them, uh, the word internal criticism is more on concern what is the document says. So, kumbaga, internal criticism is confirming the historical information, if the historical information written in the particular document is accurate. So, we are looking here if that particular uh, document is uh, really happens. Ano po, kung talaga bang yung mga informasyon na nilalaman yan ay nagtutugma-tugma at hindi lumilihis na po ng bawat informasyon. Okay, so there is, there is some question that we have to be raised or we have to raise to answer the internal criticism of a particular sources. So, one of its question, is it likely that what the author says happened really did happen? Ano po? And then, pangalawa, what if it is just an hyperbole? So, when we say hyperbole, the exaggeration, ito po yung tinatawag dito sa ang hyperbole. Kasi, to give you an example, one of the historical hyperbole na nangyari dito sa, uh, nangyari, is if you familiar with the Battle of Thermopylae, Thermopylae. Uh, Thermopylae kasi, ang kwento nito, ito daw po yung labanan ng millions of Persians. Remember ha? Take note. Millions of Persians against hundreds of Spartans. Tapos, ang nanalo daw po dito ay ang Spartans. Are you going to believe that? Against millions of Persians, mananalo ang hundreds of Spartans lang? Di kat may point na napaka-exaggerated ng information na binibigay ng particular document na yon. So, yun yung isa sa mga ginagawa ng internal criticism. Kung baga, tinitingnan natin yung pinakang nilalaman ng dokumento, not just the outside interface or let's say, not just the origination of that particular sources, but also the inside information of that particular document. Okay, so another thing is, would people at that time, uh, to give you an example, halimbawa kasi, 
isa sa mga sinabi ni Kat Hess sa series ay yes, uh, the youth is the hope of the fatherland. Wherein, he was referring to the youth to see the world as black and white and they would not be burdened by family considerations lang. So, kumbaga, ang pinakantanong naman natin dito, would people at that time have behaved as they were portrayed? And then, um, dito kasi, naging exaggerated yung konsepto natin ng the youth is the hope of the fatherland. Kasi parang inasa na natin sa kabataan yung Uh, pag-asa ng bayan, something like that. Ano po? Wherein, hindi naman ganun yung ibig sabihin nung konsepto ni Gato Serizal. Doon sa sinabi niya na ang kabataan ay ang pag-asa ng bayan. So, kung baga, na natin yung disadvantage and advantage. And then, there's another question here. They are as poor as mice. Did they believe, uh, did they behave like mice? Another thing is, could events have occurred this his way? Was there any stop, uh, embellishment by the author? And most especially, the most special question here is, are the data presented reasonable? Do you get do you get or do you see as every information labeled in that particular document as a reasonable one? Something like that. And that is for internal criticism. And also We have to look the other version of the document. If there is another document existing about this particular document. So, kumbaga, nagkaroon ng another version of that particular document. So, that is the internal criticism by the external criticism. So, ulitin ko, pag sinabi natin external criticism, it talks about the genuine the genuinity of a particular document. Pag sinabi naman ng internal criticism, it talks about the accuracy of the information of that document. Okay, so another thing is, let's now proceed to the seven factors that identified by Howell and then Prevener. So, una na si binigay niya is the genealogy, genealogy of that document, of the document. So, pag sinabi natin genealogy, it refers to the development of the document. Is the document maybe original, a copy, or a copy of the copy? So, yung bang nabasa natin na dokumento ay original, manuscript, original manuscript, something like that? Or is it is just a photocopy or a photocopy of something that is already a photocopy one? Something like that. And another thing is the genesis of the document. So, when we say genesis of the document, it includes the situations and then the authorities during the document's production. And then pangatlo, We have the originality of the document. So, dito, it includes the nature of the document, whether it, in, it is an eye or ear witness account or merely passing of existing information. So, is that like, for example, yung account po ni Antonio Pigafetta about the Magellan's voyage around the world? Is it a kind of an eyewitness account or it is just a secondary source that we can use kasi it also already interviewed from an eyewitness ano po? So, yung account ni Antonio Pigafetta is an eyewitness. So, some of the people inside that uh, last ship na nakabalik po ng Spain, gumawa sila ng account. Pero yung iba sa kanila, hindi marunong at hindi author since hindi author. So, some authors from different countries na balitaan yung circumnavigation eh, nagkandak po ng interview doon sa mga kasamahan ni Pigafetta na yung 18 na nakabalik If I'm not mistaken, that is 18. Kabilang po si uh, yung piloto, which is Elcano. So, 18 sila lahat na nakabalik. So, ngayon, yung ano na to, eh, some of them was interviewed by some authors to create this kind of particular document about the circumnavigation of uh, Anto uh, Magellan. Ano po? And we have the fourth, we're in the interpretation of the document. So this is one of the things that we have to pertain to the deducing meaning from the uh, document. The fifth one is the authoritar, uh, authorial authority if the document uh, refers to the relationship between the document subject matter and its author. Ano yung kahalagahan o yung significance nitong subject matter, documents, subject matter na to, dito sa author na to? Anong relasyon nila? Ano ba ang konsepto or anong klaseng pagkatao meron itong author na to? 
para gawin niya itong klaseng ganito, ganitong klaseng dokumento na to. Something like that. Okay. Panganin po is the competence of the observer. So, it refers to the author's capabilities and qualification to critically comprehend and report information. So, yung kakayahan ng author, ano po, or ng observer, or ng researcher to do or to conduct that kind of um, report information or let's say that document. So, is he a four-year degree, something like that? Is he a historian, he or she, something like that? And then, the trustworthiness of the observer. So, it refers to the author's integrity, whether he or she appropriates or reports truthfully. Okay, so that is about the, uh, the, let's call this, the factors that identified by Howell and Prevener about the internal criteria. So, dito sa internal, it is, ano ah, for uh, internal criticism po itong mga binanggit ko na to. Itong seven factors na binigay ni Howell and Prevener is for um, internal criticism. So, sabi pa niya dito, um, ang external characteristic or external criticism which ay nagfo-focus daw po sa where, when, and by whom. Kaya kanina kung matatandaan niyo nabanggit natin kung ang external criticism ba ay or etong document ba na to ay totoo. Kasi pwede nating tingnan kung anong nangyari, but ganito ganyan ang ginawa na document itong ganito particular author for that particular event. Ano po? And Aside from this, as we have to conclude this, uh, in general, the reliability of primary sources is assessed on how these sources are directly related and closely connected to the time of the events they pertain to. On the other hand, the reliability of the secondary sources depends on the elapsed time from the date of the event to the date of their creation. More likely, the father of the date of the creation from the actual event, the more reliable the sources is. This is because as time passes, more materials are likely to be made available. With this, those who engage in historical research have the opportunity to top exhaust of all available materials in order to come up with extensive outputs. So in this lesson about the evaluation of the primary sources and secondary sources, or it's all about the primary and secondary sources. Always remember that in every historical research we have uh, that we are conducting with, it is very important to have this primary and secondary sources. Kasi ito po yung isa sa mga nagiging basehan natin para mapatunayan natin yung historical research natin ay totoo at talagang nangyari. Reliable, valid siya, at talaga namang sumusuporta. So, kumbaga, itong mga sources na ito is sa mga supporting details about a particular event. So, secondary sources, it is cannot stand alone without primary sources. But primary sources sometimes is using also the secondary sources. Ano po? Like, for example, newspaper. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, as times goes by, nagiging secondary sources po siya. Or nagiging primary sources, sources siya. Depende na yan sa petsa. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo, uh, it will depends upon the elapsed time from the date of the event to the date of their creation. Okay, so that is the end of my presentation, and that all that would be the uh, all discussion for this video. Thank you for listening, and goodbye.